Let's talk about delay on brake timers. I looked out and found one of these in my graveyard, new in the box. Uh, the reason I say that is because, yeah. <laughs> so I was working on this big refrigeration unit and I, I put this up on top of the unit while I was doing some stuff. And then I, I went to grab it to put it on and the piece of crap was melted in the package just i i guess from the sun but what kind of crap plastic is gonna like <laughs> i don't know flow like putty when it gets hot from some sunlight i i don't know freaking junk anyways this one goes from like zero to five minutes let me let me talk about what this is first before we start talking about the board and before we do that oh yeah we're about to take a look at optimus <laughs> that'll be coming out hopefully soon anyways so what is a delay on break and what is it used for well let's say you've got a compressor and it's running and it's building up head pressure and all that then it shuts down well you don't want that compressor to start right back up you want to give those pressures a chance uh, chance to equalize and stuff like that scrolls are a lot better at handling that than you know reciprocating compressors but anyways it's just good for the compressor to, to get a breather so the way this works is your y call comes in here and then normally just goes right back out to the contactor but when the Y call ends, there is a period of time that you control with this knob where if Y comes back into here, the board will not allow it to go through until that time has expired. So, let's take a look at the board. And I'm going to try to set you up like this because... I did not want to make anybody seasick. Let's do like that. All right. <clears throat> so, what is going on here? Well, <laughs> first of all, let me say that this is a pretty complicated board. Um, yes, boards get way more complicated than this. Crazy complicated. Uh, like, imagine what the board in this is like, okay? They get way out there. I mean, it's it's a marvel of human engineering, some of the boards out there. Just unbelievable. So this is a simple board, yet complex, especially to me. And it's, it's multi-sided. By that, I just mean that <clears throat> we've got traces on both sides. It's hard to get into this if you don't have a schematic if we had a schematic for this board you know i would be willing to go more in depth but this board could be a real rabbit hole and i just don't have hours to uh to waste on that <laughs> i will make some comments on it though and we'll talk about it but uh this explanation is liable to fuck up even the kids in the back of the class so I apologize in advance for that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some of these components and how they may be involved. So one of the things I noticed right off the bat, we got a bridge rectifier circuit here. And this is going to be important because we want to take our AC, rectify it into DC in order to control the DC side of the board. So we got a lot of DC components here, okay? And one of the other things that really... Now, I haven't looked up any data sheets or anything, not even a resistor value. And sorry, I'm not trying to be lazy. Uh, it's just that I, did, I, yeah, I didn't want to dig too far into this. But we've got a most likely a triac right here. And... 
I'm just going to guess that this is the gate right here. Um, anyways, what is a triac? A triac is like a transistor except for AC voltage slash current. So where a transistor is almost like a diode, a diode that can be turned on and allows current to go in one direction. A triac is like two diodes facing each other. So when it gets turned on, it allows your AC voltage, which is going back and forth, or I should say current, you know, to go through it. So that's going to be important because obviously our control voltage is that's coming in here is AC. We have some big old power resistors. Well, I don't know if I would call these power resistors, but they're, they're beefy. Okay. I mean, compare them to that guy right there. And this may be part of what's involved when you clip this wire and you change your control voltage from 24 to 120 slash 240. So maybe this is what's helping the board take in that much voltage without smoking. Who knows? Um, all right, so normally it looks like that we have our AC voltage come in and then we're going up to the triac, the gate's being turned on. I'm just assuming that's the gate. Let me talk a little bit about gates. So a gate on a triac or a MOSFET is just like the switch that allows it to turn on and flow current through the two other pins that are not the gate, okay? So you can think about a triac as like a solid state relay or let's just let's just talk about a contactor for a second. So you have a, you have a tiny little voltage slash current come in, turn on the contactor, and then it's able to flow a lot of current. Well, with a triac or a MOSFET, you've got a gate, and if you get current flow into that gate, it switches the other two pins on and then you're you're able to flow a big current through those pins so anyways where was it? yes um so we have ac voltage come in then it looks like it just goes back out to this pin providing this gate is on now uh so how does this thing open these two uh, contacts when voltage is basically turned off? Well, one of my ideas about how this might be working is we have some Zener diodes here. Now, a, a regular diode is just like a check valve. So think about how water can go through a pipe that has a check valve one way but not the other way. That's how a diode works. Well, a Zener diode is really a, a cool little type of diode in that it will allow um, backflow at a certain pressure, or uh, we would say in electrical terms, voltage, because voltage is just electromotive force. You can think about it like PSI. What PSI is with water, voltage is with electricity. So a Zener diode will block until um, you get too high of a voltage and then it can be overcome. So you can use them uh, for like crude voltage regulators and stuff like that. Anyways, um, so when we get p power here, we're probably having this whole side of the circuit switch on. And what this circuit is probably designed to do is when the power drops down, as in this is off, uh, these zeners probably come into play and manipulate things enough to where certain... Uh, maybe this transistor, who knows, 
opens and disables the gate over here. So there, there are circuits in electronics that can activate when voltage is lost, and I'm guessing this is one of those circuits. Now, when this circuit is activated, it probably stays latched until this capacitor drains down. And the time that it takes this capacitor to drain down and kill the circuit is most likely determined by this uh, trim pot and a trim pot or potentiometer is just a variable resistor so when you turn this dial there's a wiper in here that goes along and changes uh, the resistance of this little device so by changing the resistance you're probably changing the time that this capacitor takes to discharge this capacitor is a little teeny guy that is probably just used for filtering, uh, kind of to clean up this uh, rectification that's going on over here. So, um, let me, uh, let's see if I have any other thoughts about this circuit. Not really. I mean, we see that there's probably some protection here. Um, uh, for the board that's probably a little transistor of some sort maybe this little guy's involved in switching this bigger one a lot of times you you will see on boards that have big like mosfets they, they have smaller transistors that will switch them so you have like a teeny switch think about like with a thermostat you know you've got a teeny tiny relay that's then activating a bigger quote-unquote relay contactor so that's kind of the way it works in electronics as well um i i think that's about it uh, hopefully that was interesting um you know obviously you don't need to know any of this to use a delay on brake timer i just went into the board because i've got uh you know i got some questions on that and if you're interested in knowing more about AC voltage and current, I'm getting ready to release a video on that as well. That, you know, to be honest, if you don't like math and um, <laughs> you're not that interested in, in voltage and stuff, you might want to avoid that video. Um, but if you would like to know more about AC voltage, how multimeter reads it, um, and stuff like that, you might find that video interesting. Anyways, that's my really crude take on this board and what it might be doing.